are tuning into Black and White Sports on YouTube. The no holds barred truth on sports. The main event starts now. All right, Black and White Sports supporters, where we're going to talk about some fallout around that that blowout victory, Dallas Cowboys, but more so on the Eagles side, the loss, an ugly loss, and it is very clear. One thing's very clear. The Eagles' defense has, for lack of a better way of putting it, and I don't think this is the technical phrase to use, but the Eagles' defense has shit the bed. I mean, that's just all there is to it. And clearly, believe it or not, they're missing Jonathan Gannon, who has actually done a pretty decent job. I understand Arizona's only got three wins, but Kyler Murray was gone most of the season. Joshua Dobbs actually looked pretty decent, and... You know, the Cardinals may mess around, win four or five games this year when a lot of people thought they would go winless or win maybe one game, and they thought Jonathan Gannon was not the guy. Well, he's kind of the guy. And so let's go over here. This is just this year, okay? I mean, you got 28 points given up to the Vikings, 31 given up to the Commanders, 31 given up to the Commanders again. 23 to Dallas the first time. Bills, 34. Look, that was an overtime win, and the the Eagles were lucky to get it. I understand this is a tough stretch. But then 42 to the 49ers, and then 33 last night to the Cowboys. And I got to tell you, as somebody being the Niners or my team, the Seahawks are not going to be a pushover. They just, I'm going to tell you, they played the Cowboys a hell of a lot tougher than the Eagles just played them. And they drop, I believe it was 35 on Dallas. And they can score some actual points, especially if Geno Smith is actually healthy for that game. They had Drew Locke yesterday against the Niners, okay? Now, they've got the Giants twice, which is a great elixir, and that Cardinals team, which is not going to be just a pushover win. I can tell you that right now. They're 10-3. and It looks like the Eagles are winning 12 games. I would guess no matter what, all those division games can get weird. So there were some things after the game. Jason Kelsey made some comments, and I got to tell you, a lot of Eagles fans are freaking out right now, and I can't say I blame them. And he kind of gave a real generic sort of answer, and the problem was it was an answer that has, has come out for the last couple of weeks from the Eagles and Eagles fans are not thrilled to hear it. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, he's pissed off and at halftime. He's fired up trying to rally the troops. And, um, you know, it's not a, a two really poor performances. But, you know, I think Nick feels the same way that we all do. And that, you know, we can play much better than we're playing right now. And, you know, we're going to go back to the, you know, back to work on it uh, this week. What's the time? I'm going to tell you what was wild about him last night. There was a, uh, towards the very beginning of the game, just uh, uh, Jalen Hurts took off and essentially, and, and, and Collinsworth pointed this out, Jason Kelsey sometimes on those straight run, uh, r- running run design plays, he will play the role of the fullback, all right? And he's the center, so he'll take off the block. Well, he took off the block, and there were three Cowboys And he missed every one of them by like three yards. I I, I was like, who is he supposed to be blocking? Because he didn't come close to any Cowboys. And one of the Cowboys defensive players tackled Jalen Hurts on the play. But I was like, wow, for an all-world and future Hall of Fame center, that was rough. Well, Eagles fans have responded to this clip right here. And they... Eagles fans are a little worried right now. If you could if you could have, you would have. Talk is cheap. There has been Carson Wentz level, quote, we need to get better every single week from this team. It hasn't gotten better. This team is what it is. And and it's amazing. We're talking about a 10 and 3 team here, folks. But it's clear their fan base, and I think this is supposed to be OMG, but this fan base is clearly worried about this team, and they're not worried about this team during uh, against bad opponents. Although you were pushed to the limits twice, twice, 
You were pushed to the limits. Where was that? Where was that? Let me bring that back up. Uh, let me just scroll up. Twice. You had to go to overtime with the Commanders. And then again in October, the end of October, you were pushed to the limits by the Commanders. And then you were, of course, beat by the Jets. But against really good teams, this Eagles team is getting pushed to the absolute max. OMG, I've seen this exact video like three or four times this season. Yikes. You've lost the trust of every fan. Earn it back. We don't want to hear it. We want to see it. Hashtag Eagles. Hashtag Eagles Nation. They've been saying this since week one. It's December. After 13 games, I'm starting to think you actually can't play better. So do it. In other words, quit talking. Just go out there and figure out how to play better instead of talking uh, talking about it. And it's clear that, that Eagles fans are it's starting to fall on deaf ears now. That's just where the Eagles are at. So this came out. This is a Bleacher Report. And it's about this defense that looks like it's got a real problem. Simply put, the Eagles have a serious problem on defense, a problem that has laid bare over the past few weeks, a problem that is going to derail the Eagles' season before they can get anywhere near Vegas. Super Bowl's in Vegas. Last week, the Eagles were drilled 42-19 to by the Niners in a game where the Niners seemingly did whatever they wanted whenever they wanted. Look, all right, again, I'm a Niners fan. We're making a lot of good defenses look not so good right now. So I, I would want to be fair, but yeah. You got Niners receivers running three yards wide-ass open, and some of them more than that. I talked about that earlier. Leading up to Sunday night's contest, head coach Nick Sirianni told reporters that the team was busily working to find out a way to shore up the pass defense that entered the matchup with the Cowboys 28th in the NFL. It didn't work out. It didn't work out. Quote, we'll be doing some different things this week, and we're – continuing to try to find ways, said Sirianni. Obviously, that's unacceptable on our end. That's everybody. That's coaching. That's playing. We have to fix that to say, quote, we're going to do this, this, and this. Obviously, I won't say that. I know it's going to be a long two days of us grinding through it and trying to get things right. Yikes. Ruben Frank of NBC Sports Philadelphia broke down the Eagles' defensive struggles over the last month. The Eagles have allowed 435 yards in their last five games, third most in franchise history in a five-game period, as well as 29.4 points per game, second most in the league. So in the last five games, when they've started playing really tough competition and, and the commanders, whatever it is about the commanders, they dropped 30 on the Eagles. Uh they're the second worst in the entire NFL. That's crazy. Quote, they have allowed 15 passing touchdowns, fourth most in franchise history in any five-game span. That's an average of three passing touchdowns a game. And 306 passing yards, fifth most in franchise history over five games. But it's not just coverage and tackling. The Eagles have not pressured well, especially the last three weeks, in wins over the Chiefs and Bills. In the loss to the Niners, the Eagles faced 121 pass attempts, only managed just four sacks. They also just uh, had just one in the second Washington game, and they've fallen off big time against the run as well. That is that is not good, folks, at all. This this Eagles team, and, you know, they're talking about Jalen Hurts in the, in the MVP, and they're talking about the contenders now. And he was right up there in, like, the top three contenders. Now they've got him more down towards the very end. And I would guess, honestly, he's not going to win it, all right, at this point. It is unlikely that Hurts wins the MVP now. This is NewJersey.com. But his clutch performances and victories against the Chiefs and Bills could keep his name in the conversation until the end. However, the 25-year-old has not been shown consistency enough to be awarded the NFL's best player. One of my problems with him right now, and I've said it before, is he's thrown too many picks. He's thrown too many picks. Now, 
Back to the other side of the ball. The, the strength of this team has been the offensive and defensive line during this last few year run, right? Well, that defensive line is not pressuring the quarterback the way that it was. And that's a big problem. It's not even just sacks. You got to make the opposing quarterback feel uncomfortable. Okay, you could see very quickly in the NFC Championship game last year, Brock Purdy was uncomfortable from the jump. And that's the way a lot of these quarterbacks looked last year for the, uh, when they played the Eagles. They would, you know, drop back in the pocket and all of a sudden the pocket started closing in and it started closing in very quickly. Guys were getting flushed out of the pocket. Guys were having to jump up in the pocket too quick. And all of that seems to be gone. They're just not squeezing the pocket on the, on the quarterbacks anymore. That's gone away. And, and you know what? This offense doesn't look the same either. Losing Shane Steichen was a thing. Losing the OC and the DC was a thing for this team. And a lot of times you see that when teams make the Super Bowl, they lose their offensive and defensive coordinators or one of the two. And that's why a lot of times Super Bowl teams won't repeat or, or struggle or whatever the next year or just don't perform as well. It's because the guy that slid up into the spot's not doing as good a job. I mean, you know, Shane Steichen is obviously proved his worth with the Colts already, with Gardner Minshew. You know, they're thick, thick in the playoff chase right now. They are. I've got the, uh, in fact, the Colts are in the last playoff spot in the AFC, and that's after losing their franchise quarterback, Anthony Richardson, although I think Gardner Minshew could start for some teams. He certainly could start in New England. I mean, my God. But you get my point right now. Nonetheless, he righted the ship, and Shane Steichen's won seven games, and the Cardinals haven't looked terrible either. As bad as, bad as three, they've looked as good as any three and ten, ten team I've ever seen. You know, I mean, they could have messed around, got in a couple more victories here, a couple more. If Kyler Murray would have played all year, that team would probably have six wins right now, maybe seven wins, and they would be giving the Niners and the Seahawks and the Rams shit fits right now. I mean, that's just that's just a thing. So there you have it. You got Eagles fans; they're not happy. Jason Kelsey saying, "Oh, we're going to make it better. We're going to make it." Eagles fans are done with, we're going to make it better. Make it better. Make the improvements. Now the schedule gets light, and this is a team you're going to look up, and in theory, they could win out. And it's going to be a 14-3 and team, potentially. A 13-4 and team should be a powerhouse. Not going to feel like one, even if they win out. Because once they get up against teams that can score points, and I'm going to tell you, they better worry. The Lions are going to be trouble for them with that offense. The Niners, the Cowboys, I don't think they make it back to the Super Bowl the way this team looks right this minute. Tell me what you think. Peace. I'm out. Till next time. Thanks for watching the show. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Be sure to tune in next time on Black and White Sports.